preach. Yes. Amen. Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. I believe that what's written in this book should be taught and should be preached. This tells me that we should not try to omit anything. We shouldn't just preach some of it and ignore the rest. Amen. So we should preach all of it. Because what we do these days and what preachers will do is preach what sounds very nice to people. And then we try to not to preach the bits that don't sound very nice, the bits that challenge us to move up to a higher level in God. Well, we are supposed to preach all of it. So, we are going to look at the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verses 1. Have you got the King, the new King James Version on that thing up there? Have you got it on? Please. The new King James, not the King James. I need a new King James. You don't? We'll have to get some new software or something to get all the versions on them. Updated. Well, okay, I'm reading from the new King James. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The topic today is sacrifice yourself. What did I say? Sacrifice yourself. Sacrifice yourself. Sacrifice yourself. The opening line in verse 1 of this chapter says, I beseech you, I implore you, I beg you. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies, therefore, brethren, let's rest, let's take a peek. There's a comma there. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. So this opening line in verse 1 of this chapter indicates that Paul was not talking to unbelievers, but he was addressing the followers of Christ. So we need to understand to whom Paul was writing. Yes. He was not writing to people who were not already Christians, people who had not made, made any commitment to follow the Lord. He was writing to the believers of Jesus Christ. The church had a struggle. That's why he was writing. They had a struggle as to their identity. And Paul gave instructions as to who they were now they had accepted Jesus. And he also gave instructions in the book of Romans as to how they should behave in their newfound faith. Amen. Because remember, they were um, they were not Christians before. When they became Christian, they had to have a new lifestyle. And they had an identity problem. The book of Romans sounds very complex when you read it. You've got to really have your thinking cap on and your brains when you're reading it. And allow the Holy Spirit to just enlighten your mind when you're reading this <coughs> the book of Romans. So he was writing to Christians. In chapter 12, which is our text today, he used language they were familiar with. He wrote so that they could understand. So he used language they were familiar with to give them a better understanding of the message he was 
trying to convey to them. He used the big word, the S word, sacrifice. He said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. And please note, underline the word living. Amen. Sacrifice. Oh, yes. <laughs> Somebody's listening. A living sacrifice. The first indication in scripture that a, we have that a sacrifice had taken place is found in the book of Genesis. Amen. The first indication in scripture that we have of a sacrifice taking place is in the book of Genesis. Now, now you don't sleep, now you know, open your eyes. <laughs> in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Can you, uh, is it possible to flash these up as, we, as we're talking? Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. It says, also, God, also, for God, and for Adam and his wife, yeah, that's it. Also, for Adam and his wife, you know his wife's name, Eve, yeah. the Lord made tunics or coats. That's the old King James Version. It says coats of skins. The Lord, but in the, in the version I'm reading, it says tunic, same thing. Tunics of skin and clothe them. Amen. That's the first indication we have that a sacrifice had taken place. And we, it's, it, it, it's a clear indication uh, because in order for them to have this tunic or coat of skin, something had to die. Yes. Amen. Yes. There couldn't be skin yes. if something hadn't died. Yes. Now, those of you who were not, who were born in this country and you've never visited a farm, you've never visited an abattoir, you've never, we are so clinical and clean and everything, and everything is so sterile. People don't want you to see how things are done and prepared. But when I was a child, the goat meat I ate, I saw how the goat was killed. <laughs> and the pig, and, 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 and the chicken. We saw how things were done. Things, things, we, we don't see how things are done. And when we see a little thing, we get all screamish because you don't see the reality of life. When you're locked up in a house, you don't see the reality of that. You need to go to the abattoir, go to the farm, go somewhere and see how things are done. So when I was a child, and when I wanted a chicken, we raised the chicken ourselves. It's not like now, when people, you go to the Caribbean and people won't eat any chicken that run about. They go to the supermarket like us, and everything is packaged, well chemicaled up and everything. And they used to grab the chicken, and they used to get a pan, and you grab your chicken, and you put the body of the chicken under the pan, and the neck was left out on a block, and you came with your big machete, and you put it on. Never eat chicken again. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a big pan of water that was placed on the fire, and you would dip your chicken in yes. and defeather it. Yes. Amen. And then you had to gut it and do all of that. <laughs> I saw how it was done. Then we saw how our Goat, you know, you call it mutton. Mutton is all sheep, but for us, we eat goat. And we saw the goat being killed. We saw it being skinned and everything. So God skinned an animal and made 
a covering, a coat for Adam and Eve to wear. Something had to die. So that's the first sign of sacrifice we see. A sacrifice, therefore, is the killing of an animal or a person. In some places in the world, people sacrifice people. They sacrifice their children to rivers and trees <coughs> and mountains and different things. Amen. So the killing of an animal or a person is what a sacrifice is. Uh, or the giving of a possession as an offering. That's what a sacrifice is. So you kill it and you would offer it. Amen. So sacrifice then is also the act of giving up something one values for the sake of something that is more important. You give up something that is of great value to you for the sake of something that is more important. So we see that the word is associated with death. That word sacrifice is associated with death, with dying. In the Old Testament times, sacrifice was a way of life. Every living day, when you read through the book, they had to sacrifice all the time. There were different sacrifices. So sacrifice was a way of life. We ask people to give um, uh, a little gift, money, to a project, 200 pounds, 500, and we say to them, that's a sacrifice. That's not a sacrifice. That's not a sacrifice. The real sacrifice, something had to die. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. It may be a sacrifice because we've got to die to the fact that we've got to. <laughs> Amen. Because the first strings may have to die. <laughs> All right. So in the Old Testament time, the sac sacrifice was a way of life. And in the book of Leviticus, we have recorded the first five, uh, the, 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 the first five chapters of, of Leviticus deal with what is known as the five great offerings in which sacrifice had to be made. So in the book of Leviticus, the first five chapters, we have what is called the first, uh, the, the five great offerings. And they all, all those offerings, if you are an Old Testament scholar and you study Old Testament, you will know by now that the offerings reveal different aspects of the one supreme sacrifice, Jesus Christ. Those offerings, all of those offerings reveal Jesus Christ as the ultimate supreme sacrifice. I will name the five offerings, but I won't go into all the details about them. That would have to be another time of, that would have to be done in a teaching, another time of teaching. But I will name to you the offerings. The first offering is the burnt offering. And that is found in the book of Leviticus, chapter 1, verse 1 to 17, the burnt offering. Maybe they called it the burnt offering because it burned all night and was offered in its entirety. This offering, everything of it, everything of that offering, the burnt offering, was, was burnt up. Everything. There were some of the offerings that were shared out, but not this offering. This offering was burnt all night because there was so much of it, and it, it had to be burnt in its entirety. Amen. And this is symbolic of um, the sacrifice Jesus made, uh, the ultimate sacrifice of giving his life for all sins. So that was the burnt offering. The second offering I'm going to tell you about is 
the, 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 the King James Version calls it the meat offering. But it is also known as the meal offering. And that's in Leviticus chapter 2, verse 1 to 16. The meat offering or the meal offering. There was no meat in it, by the way. That's why we now call it the meal offering. Because, uh, and it's known as the bloodless offering. There was no, no animals in this offering. Because it was unleavened cakes. No raising agent in it. Amen. Un are you hearing? Yes. Yeah? You listening? Yes. Are you paying attention? Yes. In the next five seconds, I may ask somebody what I said. <laughs> because if you're talking and laughing across the eyes, you're not listening. <laughs> so it was a lemon cake made of fine flour. Amen? Yeah. And this offering denotes the service, the works, and the life of Jesus Christ. Okay? The meal offering or the meat offering. The third offering, the sin offering. I didn't go to the peace offering because I'm telling you the offerings in the order they would have been done. Now in the order it's recorded in the book of Leviticus. So, the sin offering, which is in Leviticus chapter 4, verse 1 through to 35. This offering deals with the sin of ignorance. Because whether we realize it or not, we are sinners. Yes. Amen. Amen. We are sinners. The Bible says we were born in what? And we were shaped. Amen. We were born in sin and shaped in, in iniquity. And it's not talking about your figure, you know. You 34, 24, 34, or your body 36, 38, or whatever. Or you 6 foot 2, 1, whatever, or your 5 foot 3. Not talking about that. It's talking about the nature of sin in us. Amen. We were shaped in iniquity. We have a tendency to sin. We're prone to sin. We are prone to sin. We got that sin nature. Yes. Amen. Yes. So, because, so the sin offering deals, therefore, with the root of sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the sin offering deals with the root of sin. You have to get to the root of sin. And if you want to kill anything, what do you do? You get to the root. There are some little silly bottles of things. You know, when you have dandelion come up and they're showing you these little bottles, they advertise these bottles of stuff. And they say you should um, spray it and it will get to the root and kill it. You wait till next year. That will be like spread. <laughs> you really need to dig into that root and get some stuff in there that will kill it totally. That's what this sin offering does. It gets to the root of sin and deals with it. The fourth offering is found in Leviticus chapter 5, 1 to 13. And it's the trespass offering. Thank God for this offering. Amen. The trespass offering. This offering deals with sin, not only against God, but sin against our fellow men. Amen. And you need to read through that uh, text and you will see. Because you see, after we accept Jesus, we are still prone to sin. Because remember, the root of sin, Jesus dealt with it in the sin offering. Yes. But when we come to Christ as believers, we're still prone to sin. Because it's Paul, the same Paul who I believe wrote this, some theologians say it's not, they will say, they will refute the fact that Paul wrote the book of Romans. I think he did. And he says, when in the same book of Romans, he says, when I want to do good, 
Evil is always presenting itself. I still want to do wrong things. But the trespass offering is dealt with in this, the, the, um, us, the sin against God and against our fellow men are dealt with in this trespass offering. Leviticus 5, verse 1 to 13. It says, oh, because after we accept Jesus Christ, we still have this tendency. That we want to sin. And we don't sin only against God, but we sin against each other. And you can read. Because we will rob from our fellow men. We will steal. And there, and there, and, and things are dealt within there. Things like um, if you borrow people things. You know some of us who the trespass offering, that's why it's called a trespass offering, you know. We like to borrow people things, break it up. And then we don't and then we don't even replace it. And, and we pretend, we, 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 we pretend we didn't borrow it. <laughs> That's the sin. People borrow your money. And, 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 and they tell you next week. <laughs> I know people who have died and have gone to their grave and have gone to their funeral and are looking down thinking they never feel from Singapore. 
He talked about, he calculated how many times, million times a day. Lord have mercy. You know what? Instead of walking up and down, pretending how righteous we are, I think we should be forever on our knees. When we realize the amount of time we see, and so we sometimes we are so busy trying to flush out everybody else's sin when we are sinning the day. Oh, glory to God. We are so busy trying to flush out other people's sin. But, yes, when, when it, how many million times? It's, it's, I don't even want to think about the number. I can't even remember it, it was so big. 4.2 million times in a lifetime. And if you still like me, it may be yet. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And then we have the peace offering. The peace offering is the final one. Leviticus 3. In the peace offering, we see the act of reconciliation. Where the death of Jesus Christ brings peace to us, reconciliation. Because in this offering, all of the offering was not burnt on the altar. The priest had some of that offering. It was shared out. The offerer had some. And then the, there was some that was burnt on the altar. So the priest... The offerer who would bring the, 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 the offering and the, 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 the aroma, the scent going up into the heavens when, it, when, when the parts that should be burnt were burnt was symbolic of God having a part in that offering. So you see all three come together, yeah. reconciliation. <laughs> that peace offering is a symbol of reconciliation. Jesus died so that we could be reconciled to God. Oh God, he's the priest of our priest. So what do we observe then? So after I've gone through this, just to share about these five great offerings. And by the way, those were just the offerings. You had all the feast days and different celebrations. But what do we observe from Romans chapter 12? When Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present the body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. All the offerings that we spoke about earlier on had to go through a process. What's the word? Process. Right. All the offerings that we went through, all these five great offerings, the burnt offering, the what offering? What's the other one? The meat offering, the sin, the sin offering, the trespass offering, and the peace offering, all of them had to go through a what? If it was a, if it was a sacrifice which included the animals, the animals had to die. They had to die. That was process. Death had to take place in order for it to become a sacrifice. And in the meal offering or the meat offering, the wheat had to be harvested, literally cut. Oh, glory to God. Had to be cut from the, the stalks. The, the, these days we have what we call a combine harvester where it goes in and it just goes through the field and it just works. But in those symbols of separation, they had to be separated, they had to be cut. In those times they had the side or the sickle. Some of you young people don't even know what I'm talking about. Oh, because you have so many gadgets doing this. You, you don't even know the tools and the implements. But they had the sickle, which was like a round thing with a, yeah, with a handle. And then when it goes, it just sheared right off the blade of the wheat. Amen. 
And I know what I'm talking about because some of my folks used to plant rice. So they used to use one of them sickle thing. So then you had to go through the process. So the animal had to die. And if it was a real offering, the wheat had to be cut. Not only was it cut, it had to be threshed, yes. beaten. Yes. Have you ever seen them beating? They would put the, the you, you can tell them a country girl. Yes. <laughs> they would put, you can, you, you can be Tonys, I love the country. They would, when we were, when, when my folks used to do the rice, they used to put it all around in a big circle. You're from Trinidad, you probably know how it works. And they used, they didn't have the harvester, they'd go around with a big piece of stick. <laughs> and they would beat and beat until they got all the grains off their stalks. So not only were they threshing the grain, and after they threshed the grain, they would winnow. We call it, but a chaff. <laughs> Jesus said the chaff wish the wind drive the wind, but as Caribbean people, we call it the trash. <laughs> so they would get rid of the chaff by winnowing the thing, and after they had winnowed, oh glory, they put them wheat and back in a mortar and with a pestle they would beat beat and beat until all the outer pots <coughs> would come up and then they would then put it in a sieve and sieve you, you, you don't see the sieve you, the sieve was something and they would sieve and sieve and they would sieve again and they would have one size sieve then another size sieve and until they get all the bits out. You have to go to in order for it to be used in the grain offering. And the animal, whether it be a, a, a heifer, a turtle dove, a pigeon, a ram, or a, or a bull, they had to be killed in order for them to be offered as a sacrifice. But all of these went for a process. But I tell you what, all the offerings, all the offerings were also subjected to fire. They had to pass through what? Fire. They had to pass through fire. Just like Jesus passed through the fire of suffering on the cross, all the offerings had to go through fire. Are you learning anything from this? Yes. yes. All of this had to go through fire. When, in order for us to be presented as a sacrifice, we too have to go through some fire. Amen. The believer, therefore, in Jesus Christ is not in a similar state as the Old Testament sacrifice. So, you know now what had to happen to them Old Testament sacrifice. They had to be killed, they had to be cut off, beaten and everything. When we become believers in Jesus Christ, we are not like them dead animals. When you come to Jesus, you're not like them dead animals. There's a completely different connotation of us being the sacrifice.
sacrifice. Because the Old Testament sacrifice had to die. Our death took place in Jesus Christ. Once they die, they stay dead. But when the Christian, when you become a Christian and you die to sin, something happens. You are resurrected to a new life in Jesus Christ. Alive unto God. 
present ourselves a living sacrifice because God called us out of our dead and unprofitable works. We are to present it holy. Brothers and sisters, the sacrifices in the Old Testament could not be presented if they had scars. If you go back to the book of Leviticus, read it again. If they had scars, if they had blemishes, if they had spots, if they had broken legs, yeah, they couldn't be presented. You couldn't just pick up a sheep. You know that they, you call it roadkill. <laughs> There's a man who, who testifies that he just wait for roadkill. He doesn't buy meat. He doesn't go to the bull ring. He doesn't go to Tesco's or Asda or Morrison's or wherever or Aldi and Lidl. He waits for the roadkills. And it doesn't matter what, if it's a fox, if it's a whatever it is. He scrapes it up, he takes it home, he prepares it, and he eats it. <laughs> so you couldn't bring a roadkill. The priest's duty was to examine the animal. If the bird had a broken wing, it could be offered. As a matter of fact, those animals had to be placed somewhere for a certain period of time so that they could go through a period of purging before they could be offered. Couldn't have any of those blemishes. Or if it was late. So, you know, some people, in the, in, in, we would just we would just say, you know what, that one is here, man, ready. So let's take it because just use that. Put the effort had to be the best. And that's what Paul is saying to the Christians. We must ensure that our bodies are kept pure and holy and preserved. God. Because after all, God lives in this temple. Our bodies are the temple of the living God. So what we do with our bodies matter. Let me say that again. What we do with our bodies matter. He said, present your body. It doesn't matter how much we get exuberant and get carried away with the music in mm -hmm. our lifestyle. Yes. And that's why I said we should preach the whole Bible. Yes. If our lifestyle is not <coughs> in line yes. with the word yes. of God, we are just wasting time. Yes. Present your body. Yes. We are to present our bodies acceptable <coughs> because we achieve acceptability not through our own efforts but through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Yes. It's possible to present the body. Yes. It's possible to live from sin in yes. It's possible to keep away from temptation will come but you don't have to sin. I have a struggle with you know, certain foods, chocolate. <laughs> and I know it's not good for me because I know I shouldn't be eating it because it's high in fat. And my doctor do not want me to eat it. But you see, because I have this thing about chocolate, I see the chocolate there and I walk away and I go back home. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I leave the room. 
So this now means don't buy me chocolates. <laughs> And I leave the room and I come back around and and I said, no, no, I shouldn't eat it. No, I shouldn't eat it. And then when anybody is not looking, <laughs> and that's how sin operates. Temptation. And you notice the thing which is your weakness. The enemy always brings it up to you as it right in the wheel. Right in front of you. Amen. This is why somebody, anybody who, who is who is an alcoholic will always say, although they don't drink for 20 years, they will still say, I'm an alcoholic. Because if they take one drink, it pushes them right back. If you're a smoker, if you're a smoker, and even if you don't smoke for 20 years, the minute you light one, it pushes you right back. So we need to keep our bodies pure. And whatever else we are doing, we need pauses, present our body, and even sacrifice. And I'm finishing. Look at the word present. When you're presenting something, I have this to give to Keisha. Come, Keisha. It's a I'm presenting it to you. Come up here. Paul says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's Keisha's. Now, I'm not presenting it anymore. What does it become? What does it become? The same word. But how do we say it? Paul says, Present your bodies a living sacrifice. When I've done that, it becomes a present to Almighty God. If I'm going to give a present to anybody, I don't want to go and buy you what I would not want to do. Oh, glory to God. So when we present our bodies, we are presenting it in order as a present to the Almighty God. So why do we mess? Oh, glory to God. Christians, believers in Christ, our bodies are presents to God. Please stand. Oh, God, we are.